And the judge overseeing the long-running racketeering trial against rapper Young Thug has been removed from the case. This comes after two defendants sought Judge Earl Glanville's recusal, citing a meeting with the judge and prosecutors, as well as a state witness. ABC legal contributor Brian Buckmeyer is here to break it down for us. Brian, this is a major ruling. How did this happen and what happens next? Absolutely. So as you said, this all started off because of what we call an ex parte communication, where a judge, prosecutors, and the defense defense uh, defendant's witness, uh, sorry, uh, was uh, was in this closed room without the other defendants uh, there. That's ex parte and not typically allowed to happen. And so when judge um, came out and Brian Steele, the attorney for Young Thug there, came, said, hey, I found out there was a meeting and I wasn't a part of this and, and you didn't even tell us what occurred there. And now Kenneth Copeland is, is not pleading the fifth and testifying. We need to find out about that. And that's when these motions started to fly. What ultimately happened is the judge Glanville gave this case to judge Rachel Krause and she just handed in a decision yesterday and ultimately decided that the way that the judge handled the case, even the ex parte, was fine. But the way he came out and evaluated and accepted his own truths as a witness and judge in this ex parte communication was wrong and that was the basis for his removal. Next is assigning a new judge and then seeing where we start in this case as it goes forward. Now you spoke to Doug Weinstein, one of the attorneys for a YSL member who's another defendant in the larger case. What are they preparing for now? Yeah, so Doug Weinstein represents DeMonte Kendrick, or Yak Gotti, as he's known. And they were he was just as shocked when I spoke to him yesterday. I actually spoke to him while he was in his car. And what he's preparing for now is what comes next. His understanding is that typically when a judge is removed, you move back to where the issue occurred, the issue being when Kenneth Copeland took the stand. But if you go that far back, the jury has already heard some of what would call tainted evidence from that testimony that arguably should have never happened. So for him, he's preparing for potentially going back all the way to jury selection or simply just going back to the middle of the trial. I can see your reaction. Going back to jury selection would be a lot well, as we're already 100 plus days into this trial. That's the context, right? This trial has been going on such a long time already. What happens if they have to start from square one? You start from square one. You start with jury selection, which took months. The tr when I say 100 days, I'm not talking about jury selection. I'm talking 100 days of testimony. So it would be a lot. The argument being there that the judge made a, an error on having Kenneth Copeland testify and pressuring him to do so, and then you have to go back. But the jury already heard his testimony, so how do you clear up the error other than going all the way back? It's going to be a discussion that all the defense attorneys are going to have to come together and agree on to some extent to see what they're going to do to remedy this. Wow. Brian Buckmeyer, thank you. My pleasure.